Okay, so today I want to talk a little bit about a trending security threat that's going on in today's IT world and uh, has been for a number of years actually, and that's what's called rootkits. Maybe you've heard the name. Uh, basically, there's a couple different types of viruses out there. You have some of the lower level stuff, which would be like adware um, and bloatware, which is just basically stuff that's either going to put ads on your computer or stuff that comes with the, you know, even come with a computer is what we call bloatware, just filler software that you really don't need, but it really doesn't hurt you at all. And then there's malware, which can do things like maybe slow down your computer, come up with pop-ups and whatnot that are just really annoying. Maybe, you know, you've probably seen it before, speed up my PC, you know, speedy PC, PC optimizer, that sort of stuff. While it's annoying and it does slow down your computer, it's not really still considered a threat. Um, Basically, after that, you have uh, Trojans and droppers and that sort of stuff. And what a Trojan does is it's, it's like a smaller piece of a virus that opens up a hole into your computer so that the bigger virus can come through after it calls home to the server that the hacker has actually set up. The nastiest of all the viruses is what's called a rootkit. And what a rootkit is, it attaches to the very root or kernel or core, if you will, of your operating system. Um, and these things have been going on for a number of years. I've noticed a bit of a trend in them. About every two and a half years, they get really bad, and then they kind of just go in a downward spiral like this. Over the past six months, we've been on the lower level of that spiral, and now we're starting to come back up on it, and I'm seeing a lot more rootkits infect some of my clients' computers and whatnot. And even with the best antiviruses out there, in the best protection that you have, you can still get these things because a lot of times they use what's called a zero-day exploit, and that's basically an exploit that a hacker uses and just sends to your computer just because it's on the internet, and they can open up a hole and put the rootkit in there. Sometimes it comes in through a download, and that's usually where it comes from. Um, where those downloads come from, that's a different story in the first place. But um, basically, these rootkits are really nasty. And what usually what I've been seeing in the past couple weeks, these rootkits go in and they attach to the root of your operating system, and they're using your computer's CPU resources. In other words, they're basically using your computer for processing power. Um, I can only assume that they're using it for something like Bitcoin mining or maybe even uh, botnet activity so that they can attack other computers or maybe uh, distributed denial of service attacks and that sort of thing. Now, once you have a rootkit, what you're going to notice is that your computer may actually still function normally, but it's going to be really slow. For instance, you might try to pull up an internet page and Eventually, the page will come up, but everything is just really, really slow. Um, unfortunately, even with the newer operating systems and newer antiviruses, people are still getting these rootkits. Now, once you actually have a rootkit, you have basically two different options. You can try and remove it, which from my experience is about a 50-50 shot, or you can go ahead and back up all of your data and reinstall the operating system. Um, if you're going to remove it, the tool that I use of choice is a tool called Combo Fix, C O M B O F I X. And you can get that off of BleedingComputer.com, Major Geeks, I believe ComboFix.com actually has a, a mirror you can use as well. And what Combo Fix basically does, when you run Combo Fix, it's going to scan all the root pieces of your computer and look for activity that should not be there. If it actually finds something, it's going to try and remove it and reset the permissions on your computer and whatnot. And like I said, it's about a 50-50 chance. Uh, when you go to run Combo Fix, you have to disable your active antiviruses first. So if you have something like Kaspersky or McAfee or Norton or something like that, right click on it down the little, little toolbar there in the bottom on your system tray and then disable your protection. And that, that varies from different uh, antiviruses uh, depending on the manufacturer, but it's a pretty simple process. Once you've done that, you can run Combo Fix, and it's going to go through scanning stage 1 to 50. Once you get past stage 5, it's usually where it speeds up a little bit. It might take some time. Sometimes it only takes 5 minutes to scan. Sometimes I've seen it take up to 2 hours. So if it does run, sometimes it won't even run, actually. Uh, the, the root kits actually recognize it and uh, delete it before it even uh, can run. And in that case, you probably need to reinstall. But if it does run, give it time. It might not even pop up with a window 
for a number of minutes because it takes a long time for it to unlock the operating system to actually run. But once it actually does run, what it's going to do is it's going to go through and scan all that and, and make a deletions folder when you're done. It'll come up with a log when you're done and show you all the deletions that it's went through. Once you've ran combo fix, you'll notice that the computer is probably sped up a lot. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that you've got rid of the virus. What you need to do after that is run a good antivirus scanner. Um, I personally prefer either ESET's NOD32 Smart Security or Kaspersky Internet Security. Either one of those, in my opinion, are the best ones on the market. Go ahead and run one of those and make sure that your definitions are up to date and all that. And that'll probably go through and remove a lot of stuff. Then download a free copy of uh, Malwarebytes Anti-Malware and run that. And just let it go through and trash out anything that's in there. Then restart your computer and leave it connected to the internet for about an hour or so. When it first restarts, it's definitely going to be a lot faster. But I've noticed about half of the time, the rootkit still has a piece in the operating system there that uh, the antivirus programs and combo fix didn't remove. And within an hour or so, the computer's back to the way it was. Uh, one way you can kind of tell whether or not a computer is infected again, you can uh, hit Control Alt Delete and go to Task Manager. And what you want to do is go to your process list. You're going to notice sometimes a lot of times there's a, the, there's a lot of Windows processes that are running, um, you know, System32, uh, C host, that sort of stuff. Uh, there, when you have a rootkit, a lot of times there's multiple instances of those and they're using a lot of processing power. That usually indicates an infection. Like I said, it's about a 50-50 shot. If you get it out of there, good for you. You can go on with your life. If not, go ahead and back up all your data and reinstall the operating system. That's about all you can do at that point. Um, unfortunately, like I said, a lot of these rootkits are just getting in regardless if you download anything because of the zero-day exploits these days and how common they are. It's something you definitely need to watch out for if you are an IT guy and you service a lot of organizations, a school, or businesses, or whatnot. You need to inform your customers about these sort of things and make sure that they have good backup solutions in place. It's a really big problem these days and the threat is real. And it's only going to get worse over the next six months, so definitely watch out for it. Um, if I were you, I'd go ahead and, um, if you if you have the spare stuff laying around, I'd go up and set up a real computer and set up a test bench, and you can go and download these viruses and these rootkits off the internet and actually manually infect them on the computer. It's not hard to do. And then play with it and see if you can remove it or not. And the reason why I say you need to use physical hardware, if you use a virtual machine, the actual processor architecture looks different and a lot of viruses and malware these days are actually coded to act differently when they're in a virtual environment as opposed to a real physical computer. Um, one of the things you can do to set up one of these labs to make things streamlined is once you have the operating system up and running correctly, use something like Norton Goes to or Cronus Tour Image, make a backup of it, and keep that in your, uh, in your normal bench computer on a backup somewhere. So if something does happen, you just go ahead and load up the boot disk for Norton Ghost or Cronus Tour True Image and reimage the hard drive back to the way it was before the infection. That way you can run multiple different, um, I'm sorry, after it's been infected, you can try different ways of removing it if one isn't successful or whatnot. And uh, you, you definitely need to keep up with this stuff. I keep up with it all the time. Because if you don't, you're going to run into these root kits and you may not get it out. And unfortunately, a lot of times people end up losing their computers over it. And it's a real problem. If you have any questions about uh, a specific root kit or like an infection, you know, you know, Toby, this is acting this way or acting that way. Do I have a root kit or not? You know, by all means, throw, uh, throw a question down in the comments or send me a message.